everyone, welcome to another Procreate tutorial. This is the drawing that we will be completing in today's video. A super fun snake drawing with our little diamond floral patterns. So if you are new here, I mainly post Procreate tutorials, so if that is something you're interested in, go ahead and subscribe. Also, I have extra tutorials available over on Patreon, so if you want to check that out, I have that linked in the description below. But before we get started with this drawing, you will need to download the color palette and two custom brushes that we're going to use. The downloads are totally free. I have them linked in the description below. For the color palette, you will just need to open up the file on your iPad and it will automatically import the color palette into Procreate so that you can use the same colors as you follow along with the video today. For the brushes, you just need to go to your brush library open that up wherever you want to save them make sure you're in that folder so if you have like a custom folder that you like to save these brushes in go ahead and find that click the plus icon here and then click import and then find the brush wherever you saved it on your ipad to import it so you'll need to do that for both brushes i have also included the snake base shape so in case you have a really hard time drawing that and getting it right I wanted you to still like the way that yours turned out. So I included my base shape. You'll do everything from then on, all the drawing the belly, the textures, the shadows, everything like that. So just if you need help with the shape, I have included that as well. So just save that to your iPad in case you need it. I will also post the canvas dimensions, color profile, and layers needed on the screen and in the description below so that you can use those to set up your canvas. So take a minute to get everything ready and then come back and we will get started. Okay, this is the color palette that we'll be working with today. As you can see, just tons of different variations on pretty much the same tealish color, except for our couple colors here for our snake's tongue and eye. So to get started, we will just go ahead and create the background. So it's going to be essentially lighter in the middle, a little bit darker on the edges in kind of like a diamond shape to match our diamond shape that we'll draw on the inside of our picture that our snake will be wrapped around. So to create that, we'll be on layer one here. We will grab our first color on the first row of our color palette and drag and drop that onto the screen to fill our whole canvas. So this is the lightest color, so this will be in the middle. So we'll draw two darker shades on the corners and then we'll blur them all together. So to do that, so it's even all the way around, we are going to turn on symmetry. So we'll go to our gear icon in the top left under canvas, click to turn on the drawing guide, click edit drawing guide, select symmetry, and then under options, set it to quadrant and then go ahead and click done. Then we just need to make sure that this layer that we're on now says assisted. It should, if it does not, click on it and turn on drawing assist. Then we'll grab our next color on the top row, the second one in line, a little bit darker than the one that we just used. And we are going to use our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. Go ahead and just set it to maybe 30%. And I'm going to start on the top outside my canvas, maybe roughly like in the middle of this left of this middle to right section here. Draw a line going down into the right, hold it down, touch your finger on the screen to get a certain angle. We do want this angle here and it's okay if they overlap a little bit on the sides. So it is two from vertical. So if you're on vertical, it's one, two over. Then let's go ahead and fill in those areas. Make sure not to overfill if when you go to fill, it fills in the whole picture like this. Just go to refill again, hold your pen on the screen and then slide the left until it just fills in that one area. Okay, then we're going to do that one more time with a slight, the next darkest color on our color palette, the third one on the top row. Same brush and everything. And we're just going to snap to that same angle. So we're going to start maybe now about halfway between the start of our second color and the edge of our canvas here. Make another line, hold it down, touch your finger to the screen and find that same angle and then fill in this upper right section. Okay, so then now we can just blur these colors together to get our nice gradient background. So to do that, we'll just go to the wand icon, click Gaussian blur and 
increase this to a good amount, like maybe 35 to 40% somewhere in there. Okay, then we can go ahead and move on. Next, we're going to draw our diamond in the background, the white diamond. So to do that, we'll go to our layer menu, add a new layer right above our layer that we just created, click on it and turn on drawing assist so that we can use symmetry again. And we are going to grab our white color, the fourth one on the top row. So we're first going to create our outer edge and then our dots in the middle and then our skinnier inner edge of our diamond. So it's three different pieces all on the same layer. So let's first start with our thick-ish edge, nothing too thick, but let's see. I think this 30% is good. So 30% on our monoline brush. We're going to start a little ways from the top right on our center line. Draw a line going down and to the right, hold it down, touch your finger to the screen and find that same angle. So two from vertical and make it match on the corner here. Then we just need to click this line button at the top and edit them just slightly, basically to just make sure that they line up nicely at the top and on the sides and come to a nice point there. And there, and then that will be mirrored all the way around. So that looks good. Okay, the next up we will still be on the same layer, same color. We're just going to switch our brush to our dotted line brush that you should have downloaded. So I have that under my custom folder here. So just wherever you saved it, go ahead and find it. And let's go ahead and set it to 30% as well. And again, we're just going to start on the top middle here, right underneath our previous line. Draw a line going down into the right towards the middle. Hold it down, touch your finger to the screen to create that same angle. And then again, we can edit it. So click the line button at the top and just make sure it's nice and snug with your other line. So it shouldn't be too far in or anything, pretty, neck, pretty close to it. And then we'll just extend our lines if we need to, to make them meet up nicely on the top and right side. So we just kind of want this last dot to overlap with it. So we don't even really want, I don't even really want a space like this. I want one dot in the corner. So just stretch it out or unstretch it until these dots on the end overlap with each other there. So we get a nice dot in that corner. Same thing on the top, a nice dot in that corner as well. Don't adjust them too much, otherwise you might mess up the angle. So if you need to just redraw them, go ahead and redraw them. But we want that nice same angle there. We're very close to it. Okay, that looks great. So then we'll just switch back to our monoline brush again. And we'll just in and we'll just decrease the size this time. So maybe 10% this time to get a nice kind of skinny inner line here. So again, same thing, starting on the top middle, right underneath our dotted line. Let's go ahead and draw a line down into the right, hold it down, touch your finger to the screen to match that angle. Click the line button at the top to adjust it, make sure it meets up nicely. There and there. So that completes our nice diamond shape. So that looks lovely. So we can go ahead and just turn that line off. And then while this looks great, I am going to stretch it out on the sides just a teeny tiny bit so that we have just a little bit more room to draw our snake and our flowers and everything. So to do so, we'll just click our arrow tool, set it to freeform, make sure that snapping is turned on in the bottom left. We're just going to stretch out one side from left to right just a little bit and then recenter it on our center yellow lines like so. So the vertical and horizontal lines should light up yellow when you are there. So just a little bit stretched out there beyond what we had it. Okay, and now comes the really fun part, the snake. So the biggest part that might take the most time is just getting the lines right. So the inner and outer like line of his body that we're going to fill in and then color and shadow and texturize and everything, the base shape. It just might take a little bit of a time to get it right. That is why I have also included my base shape for you to use if you need to, if you just can't get the shape right, which is totally fine. It's a little challenging. So if you need to use that, feel free to do so. It was included in the downloads. You just need to go to the gear icon, click add and click insert a file because it should have downloaded to your files as a PNG and then just import it onto your canvas. 
One other thing that I wanted to mention if you are using the import method is just to make sure that your snake goes off the diamond in the three areas circled in the picture here. So by that I just mean that it should go all the way off the diamond past both lines and the dotted line. So past the outermost line of your diamond and then come back in so that you should see just the teeniest little gap past that last line of your diamond. So just depending on your diamond size and how your shape imported, you just might need to move it around or resize it on either uniform or freeform to make sure that that happens. So just pause on this picture here and make sure that everything looks good. Okay, but if we're gonna try to freehand it, all we need to do is go to our layer menu, add a new layer on our layers menu, grab the first color in this on the second row now. So now we're on these colors. So the first one on the second row. We're still going to be on our monoline brush to start and then we're going to switch to our monoline smooth brush to draw the body. So just the monoline brush and we're going to start in this top kind of left area right here and draw its head first and then we'll go off of that. So just right on my diamond I'm going to draw a good size circle, hold it down, touch my finger to the screen to make it a perfect circle, maybe about this big. Go ahead and fill that in. And then we're going to draw its like nose and mouth off of it. So I'm just going to start on this bottom kind of left side, go off and just kind of like a little shape like this with some rounded edges, fill that in. It's kind of got like a little point and then it kind of goes down. And then I'm going to kind of smooth it out where it meets the circle. So it's kind of in more of a curved line. So it all kind of looks like it's one big shape, like so. Okay, so its tongue will come off the front here. I'm going to grab my eraser tool. Also have this set to the monoline brush. Um, I have the size set to like 30%. And I'm just going to kind of, I don't know, kind of just smooth this out a little bit better. Maybe make it a little skinnier from top to bottom. like so. Make sure everything's filling in nice, so if you need to go in with your pen at all to fill in any gaps, do so. Okay, so this is a good base shape. I'm just going to give him a little bit more definition on the top and bottom, kind of like, almost like he has like, you know, cheeks. So we'll add like a little bit of a hump there, a little bit more of a hump on the top as well. Like so. Okay, and we can always come back to this and fix it up a little bit more later. Okay, so now to draw the body, we're going to draw it on a separate layer so that we can kind of do it a couple times and not worry about messing up our head. So the head can stay as is. We'll draw the body on a separate layer, then we'll merge them together once we like our shape. But first, I'm going to lay down a, key, a few key little points. So let's go ahead and add a new layer, and we'll add our points on this. So let's just go ahead and use the same color that we have right now. So the first key point is going to be straight across from the head, basically right about here. We are going to go off the diamond there. The next one is going to be in the middle of this bottom right diamond area. Another point in this color will go off here. Okay, then we're going to go straight across from this and up a little ways on our diamond and make another dot in this color and we'll go off there. Then we're gonna switch colors to this orangish color just so that we can see it better. So either of the orange colors and I'm going to make another dot right down from this one on our diamond. So this is about going to be the width of our snake. So essentially our, the first line that we draw is going to be the inside line and that is going to hit this point, this point, and this point our darker colors and then I wanted this other point here for when we make our outside line it's going to hit that point and these are the points that it's going to go completely off the diamond so that we can overlap it with the diamond later so let's just go ahead and leave those points down let's add a new layer go back to our original color the first one on the second row and we are going to switch to our monoline smooth brush that you also should have downloaded under the calligraphy tab is where I have mine saved, but find yours wherever it is, set to 30%. And this is a nice smooth monoline brush with streamlined and stability turned pretty much all the way up. And so when you start drawing, you'll see it kind of like wraps around, kind of follows you nicely where you go in like really, really nice smooth lines. So 
here we go. I'll put a picture on the screen of what this is going to look like, the shape and the diamond, so that you can kind of see. But essentially, we're going to start right off the head here. We'll make it, it'll just kind of go straight off. We'll fix that later and kind of blend it together better. But straight off, like towards the bottom side of the head, because we're drawing our inner line first. So we'll go off the diamond right where that line is, kind of loop around. We can just touch the edge of it here. Then we're going to make our big loop. And then we're going to go off right about here, go all the way off, go all the way off, and then come back down into like a tail. So that was one line. So now we're just going to do the other one. And I drew it really slow. I'll probably draw it again quicker to get some smoother lines, but I just kind of want to show you the base shape. So then we're going to start on the head a little ways up. And now we're just going to make the other side following the same exact shape and keeping roughly the same distance between our lines. So I'll start here. I'll kind of follow all of these. This is the inside of the loop now. Then we go outside and then we hit this point and go off the diamond and come back in. So that is roughly the shape of the snake. So if you want to leave that down, you can. I can go to my layer menu, click on the N on this layer, turn the opacity way down. So now we kind of have our shape. Add a new layer right above it, and this is the one that we'll actually draw on now. So I'll go a lot faster and smoother. So I'll just kind of start here. And then I can also kind of see where I wanted to change things. Okay, that looks good. I'll do the other side now. Okay, that looks pretty good. I don't love the loop. I want it to be a little skinnier here because like this part right here should be a little thicker. So I might just draw the second line again. That looks good, but now I don't like this part. It needs to be a little bit more consistent. Okay, that looks really, really good, except for just a few parts. So I can work with this. Um, I can even lay down just some new parts here. So I want it to be a little bit thicker right here. So I'm just gonna start here, kinda, oh, not that thick. So I'm just gonna start here, kinda just thicken it up and go back into my base shape. Um, let's see, same thing here. I might want it a little thicker right here. Okay. Otherwise though, I think that looks good. I didn't quite go off the diamond right here where I needed to. It's almost all the way off, but as you can see, it's overlapping my outer white line just a little bit. I'm just going to grab my eraser tool on the monoline brush and kind of just erase that whole little part there so I can kind of redo it just because everything else looked so good. So boom, that's all I really needed to do was just make sure to completely go off of it and come back in. like so. Might make this edge just a little thicker. Okay, I might make this part a little thicker as well. Okay, otherwise that looks good. It went off there, it went off there, and it went off here. Even if it's just a little bit, that's enough. We just need the teeniest bit of the gap showing there. So this part will be behind the diamond, this part will be behind the diamond, and this neck part will be behind the diamond. Okay, so otherwise make sure that all looks good to you, and then we can go ahead and start filling this in. Um, it's not attached to my head yet, so I'm just going to make a quick line right here to connect them and start filling in my sections. Since I have multiple sections, I'm just going to fill one, click this continue filling button at the top, and then I can just tap into the other little sections to fill them too. For the most part, there's a few little gaps here and there that I'll just need to fill in with my brush.
Okay, and then lastly, my tail down here obviously doesn't look awesome. I'm just going to use my eraser tool to kind of make this come to a point. So if yours did not, just go ahead and make that happen. Like so. Okay, now if you want to do any more now that it's all filled in, go ahead and do so. Again, I'm going to make this part a little thicker here. So I'm just going to start again. Make sure everything is nice and smoothly connected. Okay, otherwise, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so once I like the way this all looks, which I still am just not loving this part down here. <laughs> I'm just gonna make it thicker again and just like a little rounder. I don't know, it was just kind of like too straight and then cornered kind of. So let's just make that a little better again. Okay, just another quick note. We kind of want this part here to be thicker because this is going to show some of our stomach. And then same thing down here, this kind of bottom part here, we want to be maybe a little thicker because it's also going to show some of our stomach. So I'm gonna just kind of thicken up those areas a little bit more. Like so. And then that is pretty much it for our base shape. So this is the shape that I will save for you guys um, if you need to import it so that we can work on the exact same shape. Um, I am going to attach it to its head now. So I'm first going to, let's see, get rid of this, want this layer, which is like my little sketchy layer that I made. Same with this layer here, which was our dots that laid everything down. And then this layer right here should be our head layer. So let's go ahead and snap that to our body layer so they're all in one layer. Like I said before, we'll go in and just kind of smooth out the connection to its head. So let's go ahead and do that so it's just not so rounded or so it's not such a straight line there. It's more rounded like so. Okay, that looks awesome. So now we can go ahead and start doing everything else to this that we need to do. So first things first, we're going to add the stomach to it. So that is going to be on a new layer that we will set to a clipping mask. So let's go ahead and add a new layer, click on it, set it to a clipping mask. Grab the first color on the last row of our color palette now and same monoline smooth brush. And we are going to just draw the two stomach sections that I was talking about. So I'm going to start kind of right where this neck bends back, maybe right there. Kind of start outside and just gradually like make it go in and then kind of follow our curve around the side here and let it go off the shape down here. Okay, then it's not connected to anything. So I'm just going to draw around the outside to connect it so that we can fill it in like so. So I'm going to smooth this top part out just a little bit better. Okay, make sure everything filled in nicely. And then we'll add the same thing down here. So again, I'll start kind of right where this bends. I'll kind of follow the bend, go in, go off like this. Might do it once more to try to get it a little smoother, a little faster. Okay, that looks good. Just filling this in with my brush for some reason. That's fine. Okay, so those are our two like belly pieces that we can see. So now we're going to make the little like stripes through them. And to do that, we're actually just going to use the eraser tool on the monoline brush as well. So let's set that to like 10%. And we are just going to start at the top here and just kind of start erasing little lines, trying to keep them about the same distance apart. I'm not holding them down. In fact, I'm making them just the slightest bit curved 
like in the shape of the snake, you know? So following it down kind of like this, just kind of curving with it. So it curves up just a little bit all the way through. And then we'll do the same thing down here. This time maybe kind of curving the other way since that's kind of the direction it's going down here. So we get to the end. Okay, so that's the belly for our snake. So now let's go ahead and add one more thing, which is going to be the little white spots on the top of it. So to do that, we'll go to our layer menu, add another new layer, click on it and set it to a clipping mask. Grab our bright white color that we used for the diamond, the fourth one on the top row. And we're going to switch our brush this time to the studio pen under the inking category. So go ahead and find that. We'll have that set to like 25% or so. And we're just going to go ahead and start making some little spots. So we'll start on the top of its head. We'll make a few little spots on its head. So depending on how hard or light you push down, you might need to adjust your size a little. But we're just kind of trying to make a little like dashes like this in varying sizes. So I'll just add like three to the top of his head there. So then I'll go down here and add another little section. So just to get some variation, sometimes I'm pushing hard, sometimes I'm pushing lighter, um, sometimes making longer ones, shorter ones, just kind of whatever. So there's another section there. Then maybe we'll go down to this section here. Make another little section there. And then maybe let's do this side of the loop. Maybe like that. And then let's go ahead and do like this overside of the loop. So then it loops around this part here is on top. So let's go ahead and add some there. Okay, and then maybe some down here as well. Next. And this one, since we can like see the belly. So for the most part, these other ones, like we can see the belly a little bit here. And so I go kind of closer to this like top edge. These ones all more stay towards the middle of our shape. But then this one, since we can see the belly again, will kind of stay maybe more towards the top edge of the snake's, you know, body there. So something like that. And then we'll add a few close to the tail here as well. Okay, so that is it for our little spotted sections. So now we can go through and add all of the shadows and highlights and textures and everything to our snake. So to do that, we will go to our layer menu and we're essentially going to texturize the snake itself and also texturize our stomach area that we drew. So let's just start with the stomach area. So find that stomach little clipping mask, click on it and set it to alpha lock so that we only draw within that shape now. So then we'll grab this second color on the last draw of the color palette, a little bit darker than our stomach was. And we're going to switch our brush now to our main texture brush, which is going to be the 6B compressed charcoal under the charcoals category. Let's set the size to maybe like 20% to start. And we're just going to add like an all over texture to this. So very lightly, I'm just kind of drawing all over it. You might barely be able to see it, but that's okay. We just want an all over texture before we add like the shadowy texture and then the highlighty texture. So just a little bit and don't you don't go over it too many times. Otherwise, the whole thing will just be that new color. So just one light like layer over it. OK, now we'll move on to the next color, the third one on the last row. It's slightly darker still. So this will be kind of like our shadow color. So same size, the 20 percent. We're just going to stay towards the inside part of our snake again, very lightly. Just add this kind of darker color right towards the edge there. And again, just like one good layer all the way through. If you need to adjust your size, go ahead and do so. Then we'll grab our lighter color, the fourth one on the bottom row, and same thing, but now we'll stay closer to the outer edge. Like so. Again, just kind of like one or two good passes of that. 
beautiful. So now we'll add all the texture and stuff to our snake, our actual snake. So to do that, we'll do the same thing. We're going to go to our layer menu, find our snake layer, which I made a duplicate down here so that I can add this as a file for you guys to download. So don't worry about that one if you notice it. But I have this base layer here. We're going to click on it and turn on alpha lock for our base snake layer. And we're going to draw straight on it. So we are first going to start with these colors here. So this is our base color, the first one on the second row. We have a slightly darker one that we'll use for an all over texture. We have the next one, which is a little lighter for a light highlight, this for a bolder highlight, and then a nice shadowy color, this really dark one. So these next four colors after our base color are what we're going to use here on the second row. So let's start with our second color on the second row. Same brush at about 20%. Maybe we'll increase the size a little to like 30 since we have a little more area to cover. And again, we're just going to do a light layer of this all over just to add some texture. Again, just like one good pass through is enough. To just if you zoom in, you should see just the slightest little bit of texture all over it. Okay, and we'll move on to our next two colors, our highlight colors. So the third one on the second row, same brush. Maybe we'll drop the size a little bit back to like 20. And we're just going to kind of keep this either towards the middle or outer edge of our shapes. So let's start on the head here. And I'm just going to keep it kind of like all over the middle and the top of the head. So somewhere like this. Same thing, I might just kind of skip a little bit and just kind of add this like right on this edge here, kind of just following the shape there. Keeping that going down towards here and then I might add a little bit more towards the middle here since this is kind of the bulk of his shape. Okay, then when we get to this part where they overlap, I'm just gonna kind of skip this part we're going to add a nice shadow here and here on the left and right side because again this is our top one so i'm just going to kind of skip this area real quick where they overlap move on to this side we'll add a nice kind of highlight on the outer edge here right where it curves and then when we get towards the middle here i'm going to add a nice highlight kind of through the middle and this is the part that is overlapped but this is the part that's on top so we'll just kind of add it right through there Keep going towards the middle, outer edge down here, and kind of follow this outer edge all the way back. When we get here where it curves in, we're actually going to add a shadow there for our little curve. So I will maybe just add a teeny bit of this towards the top and then on the outer edge here on the tail. So just some good highlights throughout. Then we're going to actually just switch to our shadow color first and then we'll move on to our brightest highlight color. So we'll skip over this next color and go straight to our fifth color on the second row. We'll lower our size a little bit to maybe like 10%. And now this is our shadow. So I'm going to add this starting again towards the head. I'll add this to the whole bottom side of his head and neck area here pretty lightly kind of on the inside of this curve here, the top part of it anyway. Then we are going to kind of follow some of this curve just to add a little bit more texture there. So I'm just kind of holding my pen more upright too. That also helps you get a thinner space, but it's laying on a little thick. I'm just gonna go really, really lightly through here, just a, kind of around the belly like so. Maybe add a little bit here where it curves in. Okay, then when we get here, I'm going to add a little on the inside of the curve here. Let's start with that. Okay, then to kind of highlight our overlap here, I'm going to lower my brush size even further to like 5%. And I'm just going to focus right here along the side of my curve so that it looks like this curve just kind of continues going across the top. So just a little shadow there and then a little one on the other side as well. Again, just kind of following where that curve would go. So right just where our edges are. So that kind of makes that more prominent. Okay, then we can increase our size back up to 10 if you would like, or you can leave it at five. Um, and then we're going to again, just kind of follow the belly down here. Not that darkly. Just very, very light. 
If you're having trouble and you're getting it way too dark, you can also lower the opacity of your brush. So you can lower this over here to like 70 or 50% or something, and then you won't get quite as dark of shadows. So if you don't like how dark they're getting, go ahead and do that. If you're kind of having trouble with the pressure sensitivity of your pen. Okay, and then again, we'll add like the littlest bit of shadow here where it kind of curves in there. And then maybe a little bit on the underside of the tail here as well, like so. Okay, so that's it for our shadows. So then let's go back and get our brightest highlight color, the fourth one on the second row. I'm gonna set my opacity back up to 100, set my size still like probably five. Let's go with 5% for this. So I'm gonna make a really bright highlight on the top of his head first. So again, we'll just start at the top. Top of his head, make a nice bright highlight. I'll just kind of add the teeniest bit kind of as we go around, just additional highlight to the highlights that we already drew. So a nice good highlight there on the edge. Um, maybe a teeny bit here throughout. And then when we got here, kind of more in the middle again, very lightly, just to add a little more variation there. Okay, then same thing on the right side here, add a little bit extra. And then through the middle here, some more as well. Okay, then down here around the corner. And then in the middle here. And the edge here. So again, very lightly, if you need to lower the opacity again, go ahead and do so. But otherwise, that is it for all of our texturizing and stuff. So that looks really, really pretty. Now we're just going to add the eye and the tongue to our snake. And then he will be done and we will move on to our leaves and flowers. And then we'll make the snake wrap around the diamond very magically. It's a magical thing that we're going to do there. So let's go ahead and add the rest of our snake pieces. So... Let's see, the tongue needs to be behind his head, so that's gonna be right above the diamond here. So let's find our diamond layer, add a layer right above it. Grab our darker orange color, the sixth one on the bottom row. And we're gonna switch back to our studio pen again that we used for the little dots on its back. So the studio pen under the inking category. We're gonna zoom in on his face here. The studio pen is great because it tapers on the end. So let's just set it to like 10%. And then we're going to start inside the mouth and we're just going to draw a little line, kind of curve it out and then curve it out again so that we get our like little pronged tongue shape. So just kind of whatever works there, little two little prongs. If you need to move it or anything or resize it or I might rotate mine a little bit, just kind of place it there. That looks good. So it's just coming right out of his mouth. Okay, then our eyeball will need to draw on a new layer above everything. So let's just go ahead and add a layer to the very top, grab this lighter peach color, the fifth one on the last row, and we're going to switch back to our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. Just our regular monoline brush is fine. Okay, and we're just going to draw a nice circle here. So I have my size set to 30%, and we are just going to draw a nice circle. Hold it down, touch your finger to the screen to make it a perfect circle. Set the size right about there and fill it in. Okay, so that's the start of our eyeball. We can resize and adjust it and reposition it later, but let's just go ahead and finish it off. So then we'll grab our eraser tool, set to the monoline brush, drop the size pretty low to like 5%. And I'm just going to make a essentially erase a little tiny slit out of the eye. So starting at the top middle, I'm just going to erase a slightly curved line going this way. Hold it down until it turns nice and smooth and then you can edit it at the top if you need to. Just the slightest little curve. And then I'm just going to start at the same spot with my eraser and do it the other way. Hold it down again. Click the arc button and you can adjust it. Make it a little skinnier. Erase anything else that's in the middle. And this is our eye. So then if you need to, you can click your arrow tool, you can rotate it, you can resize it on uniform, bigger or smaller. And we just kind of want to place it right about in the middle of his head here, like so. So that looks great. So that finalizes everything for our snake. So now we can move on. So the next thing that we will do is draw our leaves. 
in the corners. Go ahead and just add a new layer on our layer menu. Click on it and turn on drawing assist. So we're gonna use our symmetry again. Then these are all of our leaf colors, these last five on the second row. But let's first just start with this first of our five here. So it's the sixth one on the second row. We are going to be on our monoline brush again. I'm not using the monoline smooth brush, but you can try that out if you want to. I think this will be good though. So I'm going to set this to 10%. And I'm just going to start in this area here and I'm just going to make a nice kind of slightly curved line to be the base of all of our leaves. Draw a curved line, hold it down. So I just started a little ways from the top and then I'm stopping a little ways from this middle line here, our symmetry line. Then you can click the edit arc button at the top if you need to, to adjust it at all. I just want a slight curve there to just place it kind of nicely right here. So we have room on both sides for our leaves, a leaf on each end of our line as well. Okay, so then back to our brush, we're just gonna start drawing our leaves now. So let's first draw one on the end here. So this is going to be how we draw our leaves. I'm just gonna start on the stem, draw a nice curved line up, start there, draw a nice curved line back, and then fill that in. So that's one leaf. So nothing too crazy. We want them pretty big so that we don't have to draw too many. So then I'll just flip it around and do it on the other side. I, I'm bad at drawing. Um, at certain angles so I'm just gonna flip mine around as I need to to get a nice good leaf shape okay so just try to keep them all roughly the same size so that one was a little smaller I'm just gonna make it a little bigger so it matches a little bit better okay so then we're just going to kind of draw the leaves in the same direction as we're facing. So, but first I'm just going to draw the stems for them. So I will probably just make a stem right here, go down a little bit, make a stem in the other direction, go down a little bit, make a stem in the other direction. So three there, let's flip around and see where we end up with this one. So I'll make one on the left, I'll make one on the right, then I'll make one on the left again. So then we have kind of two on the same side here in the middle though, I don't want that. So I'll go back and just start on the other side. So I'll do one on the right actually, one on the left, and then one on the right again. So that looks pretty good to start and now we'll just draw the leaves off of them. So I'll just start here, draw a nice leaf, not going off the edge. So if you're too close to the edge, maybe you need to Make your leaves smaller or just kind of resize the stems that you're working with. Okay, so then we flip around and kind of go in the other direction now. Okay, so then I'll just kind of zoom out and make sure they look pretty symmetrical, pretty all the same size. It doesn't have to be completely perfect though. Some of mine are kind of like closer together than others. That's totally fine. You know, my leaves are all kind of different sizes and shapes, but that's totally normal. You know, they're just should look natural like that. So it's okay. They don't need to be perfect. But if there's any that are like way off or like, you know, this kind of has like a little more space to be filled in, maybe I'll make this one a little bit bigger. If any are like really way off, just go ahead and adjust them. But otherwise that looks pretty good. Now we're going to add the texture and shadows and highlights to them first, and then we can kind of move them around a little because I think they're a little too big. I'm gonna make them a little smaller and kind of reposition them but we'll draw all of our shadows and highlights first so that we can still use symmetry and we don't mess that up. So let's just go to our layer menu, click on this layer and turn on alpha lock, grab the next color in line, the lighter color here, the second one in our group here, it's the seventh one on the second row. And we're gonna switch back to our charcoal brush, the 6B compressed under the charcoals category. Let's go ahead and set the size to like 10%. And I am just going to go here and add a highlight to one side of each of my leaves. Preferably the side that's like in the top. 
For example, on this one here, I'm going to draw on the right side because that's closer to the top. So I'm literally just drawing like straight down the center and all over the right side. Again, pretty lightly, don't go over it too much. We still want to see some of our texture. Um, then we're going to do the same thing here. So the right side on this one, the right side on this one, and then we'll flip around here and we'll do like the left side on this one because it's closer to the, like, you know, I don't know. There's no sun really, but we're just kind of doing that. And then these ones here, I'll just make on the opposite side for the heck of it. Okay. Really just whatever side works. Then we are going to go in with this lightest color, the next one in line, the eighth one on the second row, and we'll add just the teeniest bit of highlight to that same side, just closer to the edge. So just go back in and add a little bit more. Same direction and everything. Just an additional little highlight there. Okay, then we'll grab our darker color, the ninth one on the second row. And we'll add that just all to the left side here. So just kind of filling in or the opposite side of whatever your highlight was on. So just kind of filling in that whole side with some more texture and shadows like so. Okay, and then our darkest color, the last one on the second row, is going to be an additional shadow. You guessed it, on the outer edge. So just very lightly there, add a little bit more of that on the very outer edge for each one on that darker side. Again, pretty lightly if you need to lower the opacity of this brush so that you don't get anything too dark, go ahead and do so. Okay, and then very, very lastly, this next color after our peachy colors, the seventh one on the bottom row, that's an even darker color still. I just couldn't group it with my other colors on that row. Um, but that is going to be the next color we'll use. It's a lot darker and greener. We're going to drop the size of our brush to like 5%. And this is what we're going to add all over the stems. So the main stem and the little tiny stems leading up to our leaves. We're just going to add that all over that again loosely so that we can get a little bit of a texture but that just kind of helps the stem pop a little bit more okay that looks amazing so that's it for our leaves so like i said i might downsize mine just a smidge so i'm going to grab my arrow tool on uniform downsize it a little bit and then what i'm going to do to place them kind of where i want them i'm going to place one of them where i want it so this bottom left one's probably closest to where i want it so i'm just going to drag it and be like right there Okay, then we're going to grab my selection tool and I am going to set it to freehand, make sure color fills turn off and I'm going to select around these top two, so right in between them, so those top two are selected. Arrow tool, so then with those selected, let's turn on magnetics and turn off snapping in the bottom left. And then we'll drag this side up so that it stays in line, but just drag it up so that it's like evenly spaced on the top and side like this bottom left one was. Okay, then we'll grab our selection tool, turn that off, turn it back on so that we can select around these right ones, arrow tool, and we'll drag these over, keeping them roughly in line with where they would have been, and spacing them kind of on the right side there. So that's just because mine got a little too big. If yours look perfect the way that you like them, go ahead and leave them, but that's how you can move them around and resize them if you need to. Okay, and then lastly, we're going to add our flowers in the background of our snake. And then we'll do the magic trick to make the snake look like it's wrapping around our diamond. So to add the flowers, we're going to add those in the very back, right above our background color layer thingy that we laid down. So right underneath our diamond. We're going to grab our white color again, the fourth one on the top row. And we're going to switch back to our monoline smooth brush. If you want to use that one, you can try the monoline brush as well. But I'm going to start with the smooth one and see how that goes. We'll have the size set to about 30%. And I'm just gonna add a few little flowers in the background kind of coming off of our snake just to kind of fill in some space. So I'm probably gonna do three total. So I'll probably do one right here, one down here, and then one right here. So just kind of plan that out if you want to. So I'm just gonna kind of start from the snake, maybe right about here, make the stem first. So I'm just gonna make like a curvy little stem. Then I'll make the flower on the end, which I drew a little too far, but maybe I can wrap this in with it. There we go. So just a three-pronged little flower like so. 
Then I'll just add a few leaves, just kind of off the stem, nothing too crazy, just where I can see them. Okay, so there's one good flower. Let's see, I'll add another one down here that I might be able to see more of the leaves and stem from. So maybe I'll start the stem here and kind of curve it around up to here. Make the flower on the end here. Three loops. Then I'll add some leaves. So just kind of wherever yours work out. Okay, then I'll add another one. So this one I might even start, like I think I want the flower to be like right about here. So I'm just going to kind of start at this end, kind of wrap in. Maybe I'll try going the other way. Um, maybe something like that. And then we'll make the flower here. like so, and then add a few leaves. Okay. So just kind of make sure that they are where you like them. Make sure they're kind of evenly sized. This one up in the middle here might need to be adjusted. So again, selection tool on freehand. I'm just gonna select it, maybe rotate it a tiny bit, turn magnetics off first. And then on uniform, maybe just increase it just a little bit, but I don't really want it to go up into my leaves, but maybe just place it like right about there, just a little bit bigger. Okay, and then we don't want our flowers to be as bright as our diamonds, so I'm just going to go to my layer menu on this flowers layer, click the end to open up our options here, and I'm just gonna drag the opacity down just a smidge to like maybe 75%, so they're just a little bit lighter. Okay, and now we have gone to the final step of making our snake disappear behind our diamond. So what we're going to do is go to our layer menu. We are going to merge all of our snake layers together now. So we have our tongue, we have our body, we have our um, belly, our white dots, and our eyeball. So all five of these layers we're going to snap together to be on one layer. It shouldn't mess up any of our clipping masks or anything, so like you shouldn't have shapes sticking outside. So it should look like this. Then we're going to go to our layer menu and make a duplicate of our snake layer. Either one of them, we're going to slide down below our diamond layer, still above our flower layer. Okay. We're going to go to our top snake layer here, right above our diamond. Grab our eraser tool set to the monoline brush, maybe at like 30%. And where we want it to wrap around, we're just going to erase right there. So we're going to erase right here. And you should see your dots and your two lines. So just erase till you get to see all those. We're going to erase on this bottom part right here. And we're going to erase this top part on this side. Again, till we see our dots and both of our lines. So that is why it was important to draw our lines around our shape there so that we could do this little trick. So essentially what's happening is we have our top snake layer, which we're erasing through to see to our diamond layer, but then right below that is our other snake layer that's still completed and full. And so we're seeing straight through our diamond layer to that below it, and it all looks like one cohesive shape. So that being said, that is the final step of our drawing today. I'm just going to go to my gear icon, turn off our drawing guide and boom. So I hope that you like the way that yours turned out and I hope that you had fun. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more tutorials from me in the future. Again, if you want to check out the extra tutorials that I have over on Patreon, that's linked in the description below. Also, if you would like to share your drawing on Instagram, I would love to see it. So go ahead and post it and then tag me so that I can check it out. While you're there, go ahead and give me a follow so that you can see what I'm working on next. Thanks for watching!